In this video, I'll describe the organisation of the vowels on the Pronsai English charts. The vowels are arranged by how they're articulated, which is different from the approach taken on other people's phonemic charts. The vowel inventories in American English and British English, and in the varieties of the language that are similar to each of these, differ in several ways. One of these ways is a consequence of American English being rhotic, that is, there's an R colouring to syllables which end with a written letter R. American English therefore has a fourth member of the schwa family of reduced sounds, compared to three members in British English. The diphthongs in British and American English differ for the same reason. To see how we deal with these differences on the two charts, we'll remove the consonants and look at both the American and British sets of vowels on the screen together, with the American ones on top. We'll look at the top section of the charts which contain the full vowels when they appear in stressed syllables, and the bottom section where we point all the unstressed sounds. So follow the top half of the screen if you're more interested in the layout for a rhotic variety of English, and follow the bottom half for the non-rhotic one. Remember that you decide what exact values to accept for each sound. So, for example, the British chart is also fine for use as an Australian English chart and the American chart works well for Canadian English. Note that the IPA symbols used for American English are less standardised than those used for British English. In two places, we've shown the alternatives that you will often come across, for the vowels in the words mate and met. The tense vowels of English appear in the top row of the vowel section. These are often described as long but they aren't long in all contexts, and the length distinction, when it occurs, is less obvious in American English. So we prefer the label tense. Their lax counterparts appear in the bottom row. These have a different quality from the tense vowels. They're not just shorter versions of them. They're different in more fundamental ways, while sharing tongue gestures which are broadly similar. Notice that there are three lax vowels below the tense vowel E on the left. Pedagogically, these three vowels are best distinguished by the jaw height used in producing them. The schwa family of sounds appear at the bottom of the chart, in a separate section for all unstressed sounds. The position of reduced sounds at the bottom of the chart, and the use of dots rather than rectangles for them, visually reinforce the teaching message that these are the lowest energy sounds. It's clear that they are different from full vowels, whether stressed or unstressed. Also found at the bottom of the chart are the dashed placeholder rectangles where full but unstressed vowels are pointed. We saw an example of this in the first video with the word window. The effect of having this separate section of a chart is that when pointing the sequence of sounds in a word, a word like Canada, the, point, the pointer goes up for the first vowel because it carries the stress and comes down for the next two vowels, which are both unstressed. So the stress pattern of the word is visually represented by the movement of the pointer. Notice that the schwa sound is represented with two shapes. One is a filled in white dot, and one looks like a dashed circle. The white dot is for the type of schwa that is a reduced vowel. We view the second one not as a circle, but as a dot that is the same colour as the grey background. This is for the type of schwa that Catford described as an open transition. We make use of this distinction in our teaching, but if you, use, if you use the charts as a conventional phonemic chart, or if you don't want to teach this distinction, then you can ignore or cover up the grey dot and just use the white one for all sounds conventionally described as schwa. Notice that the close relationship between full vowel families and the reduced sounds is indicated by the fact that they are lined up on the charts. The rhotic diphthongs of American English, those ending with R coloured sounds, and the centering diphthongs of British English, those with a schwa as a target for their glide, are given their own rows. They are vertically positioned below or above the tense and lax vowels that are closely related to their starting points. The so-called closing diphthongs also have their own row. These close towards targets that are either the shui or shu. But in phonemic script, full vowel symbols are conventionally used for these targets, and we have followed that convention on the black and white IPA versions of the charts 
that you can see on the screen. To understand the left to right arrangement of the vowels, it is important to understand that vowels can be analysed from either an, either an auditory or an articulatory point of view. Phoneticians use the auditory analysis for most of their purposes, even though their quadrilateral arrangement, shown top right, has labels which appear to refer to articulations. As teachers, an auditory analysis isn't helpful for us. We need an articulatory arrangement of the vowels. To expand on this point, the IPA quadrilateral uses labels like front to back, across the top, and close to open, down the side, which sound as if they are articulatory, but actually they aren't. This diagram actually portrays acoustic data derived from acoustic computer analysis. While the labels do describe the articulations needed for vowels quite well in the upper left part of the diagram, they describe the articulations involved in the lower right hand part much less well. In our view, it's unfortunate that phoneticians use labels which sound like articulatory properties when they're describing acoustic properties. Many people get misled. The vowels in the Pronsai charts are organised based on their articulations. This is a diagram produced by John Esling, a phonetician from British Columbia. It summarises some of his research into vowel articulation. We have highlighted in yellow the movements that create vowel sounds, and we have built these dimensions of movement into our charts. They are jaw height and three natural directions of tongue movement, based on the way that muscle fibres are arranged in the tongue. Frontal movements, raising movements and retraction. You can read more about this in Esling's article and in our phonetic guide, which you can download from the Pronsai site. The vowels which involve a frontal movement of the tongue are grouped on the left. Within this, on the line of lax vowels, the vowels in the words hid, head and had are distinguished by jaw height. Notice that this family of vowels includes a tense vowel, e, three lax vowels, various diphthongs, and at the bottom of each chart, a reduced sound, shui. There are fewer different sounds in the central category, but it does include schwa in American English and schwa in British English. The raised sounds are anchored by the sound oo and contain the reduced sound shwu. The retracted vowels are on the right of the chants. Note that many speakers of American English do not have two distinct vowel sounds in words that I would pronounce in British English as lot and law, or cot and court. Some American English speakers do distinguish these two vowels, but if you don't want to teach them as being different, then the two rectangles in the top right of the American chart need not be distinguished. Give the same sound value to both of them. In summary, the arrangement of the vowels into stressed and unstressed sounds, into full vowels and reduced sounds, and into rows, columns and families, allow us to bring out all the key characteristics of the vowels of English and the relationships between them. You have now seen how the Pronsai charts meet the requirements that I described in the first video in this series. The charts are a tool for teacher and students to point sounds, words and phrases in a way that can be followed by everyone in class. If you'd like to find out more about the chart designs, you can download detailed notes and copies of the charts themselves from the link on the slide. The black and white charts can be printed out and used free of charge at any size. There is more about the phonetics of English, described from a teaching perspective, in this guide to the charts. And there is a guide to pointing words and phrases in the classroom, also available as a download.